Hello, I am back and we are finally doing painting on rocks. If you missed last week's video, I kind of explained why I cut my hair off, but also why there was no video. You can watch that to catch up if you haven't seen it. But this is a video I've been trying to create for around two years. It's a long story. Painting on rocks is something that I honestly can't believe I haven't already done on my channel. It's something that I used to do as a kid. I feel like it's just like a very common arts and crafts activity. And I just like, I can't believe rocks has not been accomplished yet. Until today, I have a bunch of rocks and I'm going to paint them. But first, let's play a game. Rock, paper, scissors, and shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, and shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, and shoot. Who won? All right, enough of the games. I'm taking out my bag of rocks. There are several different options here. We've got this rough one. I have this very smooth one. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. Feel it, it's so smooth. I've got this circular one. This other flat and rough one. And this rock that has already been painted. <laughs> More on that later. The point is that there are a decent amount of options here for things that I can paint on. The first one I decided to go with was this one. This one has a nice smooth surface and I feel like it's a great first rock to practice on. I chose these paints for the rock and I'm starting with the light blue. I created a like pale blue background that kind of looks like a cloud. The blue was actually fairly see-through and typically this paint is pretty opaque. So then I was like, eh, maybe I should have put the gesso down first noted for the next rock. On this rock, we are painting Tula. Tula is one of my squishies. I did it actually in my most recent squishy makeover. That's when I created Tula. Tula the toucan. I just love saying that. Tu, Tula, tu, what is that called? Assonance? Consonance because of the T's, but then the ooh would be assonance, right? I think it's both. I'm basically just kind of sketching out where I want Tula to go and then I kind of went back to the cloud and I was like, let's make it all very sketchy. It kind of just made the cloud look really dirty, but oh well. Dipping into some out of focus yellow and I'm creating Tula's big toucan beak. At this point, I'm kind of still trying to figure out the shape of everything. So I'm kind of going back to the green and then painting the head a little bit, trying to create the little like neck piece and then going up and making the tail. I also made a wing that's kind of like flying up. Tula is a gossiping hen. Well, she's not actually a hen. She is a toucan, but you know what I mean? She's a gossiper. So she's always like kind of like talking about people. And I decided to make Tula really look like she's gesturing towards something, a gesticulation, and talking out of the side of her mouth. This is the part where I kind of like, I don't know, I wasn't quite sure how to draw this or paint this. I kind of like had her going talking out of the side of her mouth, but I didn't like the way it looked. So I kind of went back to the eyes. I at first had created the black outline for the eyes, created the whites. That looks like an absolute mess, let's be honest. But I went back to the mouth and I was like, maybe Tula needs a tongue to show that she's like a kooky bird that's talking out of the side of her mouth. Um, this is what her mouth ended up looking like. I don't know if that looks like what it's supposed to. It kind of looks like she's eating a worm, but oh well. I decided to just focus on the eyes first. So I added the pupils and then also went back in with a darker green on the iris. So it's yellow, lime green, dark green. And I added some glimmers to the eyes as well. That's done and I decided, I think that this all needs an outline. I felt like the outline for the eyes, which Tula does have on her squishy, like she has a black outline. It's very dark in comparison to the rest of the colors. So I felt like I need to outline the cloud with black. Once I did that, it became obvious that Tula also needed to be outlined in black. This makes things look a little bit more cartoon-like, but I actually like it very much. I think it made things look a lot better. Even though this rock was my smoothest rock, it still was quite challenging to paint in a straight line on the rock. So if you're looking at this and going, oh my gosh, what is happening? Why are there so many like bumpy, jagged lines? Can you not draw a straight line? It's because I'm painting on a rock. It's bumpy no matter what I do. Anyway, I finished this up with some high gloss Liquitex varnish 
And this is the final product. I really like this rock. I know it looks kind of childish, but I love Tula. I think she's really funny and I like her wild gesticulation. She's like, look at this. And that's great. Good for you, Tula. You do you. Let's move on to our next rock. Out of these options, I decided to go with the rock that had already been painted. The first reason I decided to go with it mainly is literally the only reason actually is because it's shaped like a heart. Aww. I found this rock on the beach and I fell in love with it because of its shape and my heart just went out to this heart rock and I was like, I must have you. So I have kept this in my home for probably like two or three years since I found it. Why is this rock already painted? Where is the footage? Spoiler, the footage was never used due to unforeseen circumstances that I already explained in last week's video, so I don't wanna bore you, but we're gonna fix it up. I'm gonna redo it. I didn't like what was painted on the back. I think it's dumb. So I'm gonna fix it up and do something that is more my vibe now. I'm dipping into this neon green color and I'm starting with the innermost heart. If you watch my channel regularly, I think at this point most people are aware that I like the vibrant colors. The neons are extremely fun for me. I enjoy using those. Those are the Craft Smart neon colors and they are just great. They are quite transparent, that's the only thing, which is why I started with a white gesso background because they will take a lot of coats if you start on like a darker background, it's just never gonna happen. But with the white gesso as the background, I think this only required two coats of neon paint, so not so bad. As you can see, I'm painting this so that there are tons of drips. My idea was that you're creating kind of like a gooey, drippy heart. It's like a a goo, maybe slime, I don't know. I did my best to keep everything in the lines, but honestly it was quite difficult to keep it in the lines and everything was so small and also you have the rock as the background, very bumpy. So by the time I had finished painting all of the colors, there were quite a few areas that needed to be touched up. Luckily, black is the background and that is extremely opaque. So it was so satisfying, let me tell you, just so fun to fix everything with this black outline because it just like, it just went away. It was like I was using a magic eraser. I was really able to fix each of the hearts and make them look the way I wanted them to look. Of course, you're still dealing with a rock, so things aren't perfect, but it's perfect to me. On the back of this rock, I still have what I painted before, and this looks kind of nice and it might be a little upsetting to some people, but I decided to just paint over it with black and make this whole thing cohesive. I'm so sorry if you are saddened by this, but it's also very satisfying to watch it disappear. Back to the gooey heart. I decided on the goo drips, we need some shadows, some shading and some highlights. So I went back in with darker versions of each of the colors and added some shadows. I feel like it was very difficult to actually do this on a rock. Everything was so small and bumpy, very difficult to get a straight line, basically impossible. Did this make everything look worse? Maybe. Honestly, you could argue it. It might look worse with the shading, but I think it might have improved it marginally. I don't know. I think I like it better with the shading and with the highlights than I did before. I did go overboard yet again with the highlights. I know, I know, I just, I can't. Someone needs to hold me back. I love highlights and if I'm gonna do it, I like to overdo it. I can't stop. It's in my nature. I am so sorry. I took out my Liquitex high gloss and covered this rock with that, made it nice and shiny. And here we have the final result. We have the before, which is a black heart. I don't know why I didn't show you the other side as the before, but no oh well. I enjoy this rock, I think it looks nice. I will say the other side, maybe I should have kept it because I feel like when you put it in a garden, maybe the other side would have been nicer. Do I like the before more? Oh my gosh, did I ruin this? No, I like it, I like the goo. Next rock. I chose this circular rock. I like this one because it is a circle. It feels like very round and I was looking at it and I was like, you know what is round? A cookie. How hard could it be to create a chocolate chip cookie? I love chocolate chip cookies. I love to eat them. They are delicious. They look very nice. They've got lots of colors in them. And I was like, surely I can paint this rock to look like a real chocolate chip cookie. 
I can do that, no problem. Let me just tell you, this was a very long and hard road to actually create a rock that looks like a chocolate chip cookie. I really thought it would be easier than this. I started out with the tan color, kind of created some lighter colors, went back in with like an orangey color, and then I went back with a darker brown, and I was like, how? How can anyone paint a cookie? Is it even possible? I had to look at a reference photo of a cookie eventually, and I was like, oh, I think I've done this all wrong. So I painted some chocolate chips, tried to add some shading, and I was like, no, 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 there needs to be like little spider web lines coming out of the chocolate chip cookies. And then we need some like highlights. There was so much layering and repainting done in the process of painting this cookie that I am finding it difficult to even show you my process, let alone explain it. At this point, I was around halfway done with painting my cookie and it still did not look like a cookie. However, I felt like I had gotten it to a place where the colors were correct and the general placement of the cracks looked correct. So I was like, okay, I can work with this. Let me start building some highlights and some shading. And I started like dabbing stuff like crazy. I was like, okay, we need a little darker colors here. We need some lighter colors here. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I took a very thin paintbrush and took my darkest brown color and started adding like a little spiderweb line coming out of each of the cookies. Previously, they were like very thick lines and I made this one like very fine and thin. And then I started adding more little cracks coming off of the cracks. And I was like, okay, I think we're getting somewhere here. Creating this cookie was a fever dream. All I know is at the end, I had a rock that looked vaguely like a chocolate chip cookie. I don't know. Do you guys think this looks like a realistic chocolate chip cookie? Maybe it looks like a cartoon chocolate chip cookie? I think I kind of got there. Is it like the best thing ever? I don't, I don't know, but I enjoy it. I feel like I'm pretty proud of it actually, now that I'm looking at it on camera, like the final result. I think that looks like a cookie. Does it look like a cookie? I don't know. I think this is very exciting. Okay, wow, I'm happy with this result actually. Awesome. Okay, here we have all three of the cookies. Nope, all three of the rocks that I created for this video. I had quite a lot of fun painting on these rocks, although I think the video concept is a little cursed for my channel. I might not do it again, but I did have a good time. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I will see you next Sunday for another one. Bye.